DevOps is a confusing term. Some people use it as a synonym for simply operations. Some seem to think of it as some kind of secret source that's going to solve all of the problems of software development. Some see it as just a cultural thing. Some think it's yesterday's solution and is now replaced by platform engineering. There's some truth in all of these, except for the last one, which is just wrong. So what is it about DevOps that makes it quite so confusing? That's our topic for today. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. Some people have referred to me in the past as one of the godfathers of DevOps. When my friends hear that, they laugh because they know that I don't really like the term DevOps very much. But that's really just me being picky about terminology. I believe profoundly in the ideas and rationale for DevOps. Some of the people that are DevOps proponents and even DevOps pioneers are good friends of mine. I see us as allies in a common cause. We're describing the same approach to software development, but from slightly different perspectives. But we're still talking about the same thing, really. In this episode, I will explore what DevOps really is, why continuous delivery is a much better name, and why platform engineering is not even close to being a replacement for either one. Although this is about me being picky with words, let's start with the words for a moment and just think about what they mean. I think that if you approach software development from the perspective of being focused on DevOps, you'll almost inevitably think about it from that point of view and tend to see the relationship between DevOps and continuous delivery as something like this. DevOps is this broad cultural approach to releasing software quickly into production, while continuous delivery is a practice focused on build and deployment automation and a component of DevOps. This is what I call CD light. If you're approaching this from the other end of the spectrum though, maybe from an extreme programming background or continuous delivery, where continuous delivery is a holistic approach to software development and DevOps is a component of that bigger picture thing. Both of these viewpoints are somewhat right and probably somewhat wrong. So that's not terribly helpful, but it is a matter of perspective. In large, we're talking about the same ideas, as I said. Let me pause there and say thanks to our sponsors. We're very fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Transfic and Semaphore. All of these companies offer products and services that are very well aligned with the topics that we discuss on this channel every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, click on the links in the description below and do check them out. DevOps is an important idea and it's much bigger than only about the collaboration between development and operations. So what does DevOps really mean and why is it important? Lin Bass, Ingo Weber and Liming Zhu define it as a set of practices intended to reduce the time between committing change to a system and that change being placed into normal production while ensuring high quality. I think that's an excellent description. My only reservation with it is that it sounds quite a lot like a definition of continuous delivery too. If you enjoy our content and want to dive deeper into the world of continuous delivery and modern software engineering, please do consider joining our Patreon supporters as a member. You can join in a vibrant Discord discussions with other channel presenters, patrons, and sometimes guests. You'll also enjoy ad-free videos and exclusive invitations and content, as well as many other benefits. To join, do check out the link in the description below. I define continuous delivery as working so that our software is always in a releasable state. So in both cases, we're aiming to make changes in small steps that are always releasable into production after each small step. I suppose that part of this confusion probably arises from the fact that the best way by far to reduce the time between committing a change and that change being placed into normal production, DevOps, is to ensure that our system is always continuously in a releasable state, continuous delivery. So you can't sensibly achieve DevOps in the absence of continuous delivery. Many of you will have seen this picture. This is a common icon that used to represent DevOps. It's very widely used and it's kind of correct, but not at the same time. 
I think that this picture tends to reinforce the rather narrow view of DevOps as, a, as an approach, as being all about the relationship between development and operations, which is, after all, what the name says it's all about. But it's not because it's not en that's not enough. The other way that this picture is wrong is that you can look at it and say, okay, so development is responsible for planning, coding, building, and testing, and operations are responsible for releasing, deploying, operations and monitoring. Those are not correct at all. What we're really looking for is to blur the boundaries and make everyone somewhat responsible for all of these things. We want operations people to help us to make code that's more operable. And we want development people to be involved in the monitoring of what's going on in production so that they can see the impact of their work. That's true about all of these other activities too. It's also true that we should be going well beyond only the relationship between development and operations. It's much more than that. I'm sure that every DevOps proponent would agree that it's about collaboration across the board. This is about optimizing everything to make sure that we can plan, design, code, build, test, release, deploy, operate, and monitor, as well as lots of other things continuously. So one of the reasons that I much prefer the name and the language of continuous delivery is because it describes the outcome that we're trying to achieve, rather than describing one of the albeit necessary techniques needed to achieve that goal. Our aim is to sustain our ability to continuously deliver the latest version of our system into production. This statement of the goal is, to my mind, a better, clearer, more flexible place to begin rather than by trying to specify the steps necessary to achieve it in the name. With a name like DevOps, we end up in the rather ridiculous position of building an ever sillier set of portmanteau terms like DevSecOps, DevSecBizOps. What about DevSecTestBizOps? What about DevSecCoffeeTestBizOps? It starts to get silly really quite quickly. And partly that's a matter of encapsulation. I'm a software developer and I tend to think of in terms of software development and software design. One of my objections to the term DevOps is that it's the wrong word. But I think that it's about more than just pedantry or hubris on my part. My reservations with regard to the term DevOps are more practical than that. They come from the fact that it's inaccurate and so misleads people. It talks about this relationship in the name. It says DevOps. And as a result, it's too easy to end up with an overly simplistic view of what we're talking about. If you don't understand that the name DevOps is actually code for lots and lots of other things. And people make this mistake all of the time. It's extremely common for organizations to treat DevOps as simply a name for operations and miss the point altogether. And for others to establish a decent relationship between dev and ops, but still rely on external manual testing prior to release every few months, missing the point entirely. DevOps is a broad discipline. When Jess Humble and I wrote the book, Continuous Delivery, I can guarantee you that we were well aware of the need to include security, testing, provenance, and monitoring, as well as lots of other things. Each of these and more are touched on in the Continuous Delivery book but we didn't make them clear enough, and so that's probably our fault. But this is a very broad discipline. It has implications for every aspect and every role involved in the creation of software. Fundamentally, what we are talking about in both continuous delivery and DevOps terminology is to have an idea, get that idea into the hands of users, and then figure out what the users make of those ideas as quickly and as efficiently as we can. In order to achieve that, it requires excellent collaboration, discipline, automation, and all of those other things being focused on achieving a collective result. If our aim is to achieve continuous delivery, then ultimately it touches on the whole organization and every role in it related to software production. And that's true whether you're approaching this from a DevOps perspective or a continuous delivery perspective. Let's start thinking about what that means and how these ideas impact the activities that surround software development. I think when most people think in terms of continuous delivery, they probably start here. We're talking about build automation, test automation, infrastructure as code, deployment automation, deployment pipelines. These are core ideas for continuous delivery. 
and we went into quite a lot of detail about them when we described them in our book. These ideas, though, don't really define continuous delivery. Rather, they support our ability to get useful software into the hands of our users at any time. They are the mechanism rather than the practice. The practice is to do whatever is necessary to keep your software releasable all the time, continuously. And the whatever is necessary includes most, if not all, of the DevOps ideas. And here's where we get into the limits of the name DevOps as, as a descriptive tool. If we are genuinely taking the narrow view of DevOps and thinking about only the relationship between Dev and Ops, then while this is certainly important because you really aren't going to be able to do continuous delivery without effective collaboration between Dev and Ops, but even the best DevOps collaboration is not enough on its own. What about the relationship between Dev and Product, Dev and QA, Product and Ops, Product and QA, and so on? So we need to add these into our picture of the activities that are involved too. And that's still not enough either. If we genuinely want to get to the point where we can regularly, frequently and safely make changes and be in a position to deliver those changes into production, we need to think about the way that the requirements process works. It needs to be able to work effectively and efficiently in a world of fast, frequent change. We need to think about the broad testing strategy so that we can easily and quickly determine the releasability of our changes at any point. As well as testing, that also has an impact on software architecture, which in turn has an impact on team structure. All of these things are tools that we can use to improve the, our ability to deliver releasable, valuable change into the production multiple times per day. In order for all of this to work, we need to take seriously ideas like operational software, product selection, version control, deployment automation, infrastructure as code, product design, and so on. A better way of thinking about DevOps is to think about it more broadly rather than only a narrow view of the words that people can easily misinterpret. We can think more broadly about what the cultural impact is for example, and I do quite like Gene Kim's model of the first way, which is about systems thinking, the second way, which is about amplifying feedback loops, and the third way, which is about the culture of continual experimentation and learning. If you've read anything else that I've ever written or watched any of my other videos, you'll recognize that I'm always talking about precisely those things, except that I do it in the context of continuous delivery rather than DevOps. So I don't think that this distinguishes DevOps from con continuous delivery either. There are other definitions of DevOps. There's the CAMS model, culture, automation, measurement, and sharing. Again, these are not alien concepts to the world of continuous delivery, but are rather embedded within it. CD is simply not possible without them. So they are implicitly part of it too. I would describe continuous delivery as the ability if we think about the words alone, to continuously deliver. So we're trying to strive to be in a position to continuously be able to deliver our ideas into production. If we take that straightforward interpretation of the words continuous delivery, rather than assuming that this phrase is some kind of special technical usage of the words, acting as a kind of code that means build and development automation, then it encompasses all of the things that we've talked about so far. And to achieve that simply stated goal of continuous delivery requires excellent performance in the technical, organizational, and cultural aspects of software development. I tend to think about continuous delivery in that frame of reference. I see it as this broad holistic approach to the practice of software development. So in summary, the way that I would define DevOps is to say that it's a synonym for continuous delivery, not a competitor with it at least for my flavor of continuous delivery. Before I go though, I promise to debunk platform engineering as a CD or DevOps replacement. This is fundamentally a category error. They don't address the same problems in any way. Platform engineering is about team structure, and if you do it well, good software design. It's not a general approach to software production. It helps teams to scale by reducing cognitive load in the, in the more user-focused, feature-oriented, stream-aligned teams. It has nothing to say about testing, deployment, operations, and so on. So there's no comparison here. 
Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoy our stuff here on the Continuous Delivery channel, please do consider supporting our work by joining our Patreon community. And thanks to our existing patrons. Bye-bye.